Loop is the heart of Chicago, the oldest neighborhood, and the central business district of this bustling metropolis. It is the home of some of the most iconic architecture in the world and is filled with attractive parks, world-class museums, and grandiose structures. On this tour, we will explore the best things to do and see in this fascinating Chicago neighborhood. Hey everyone, JP here and welcome to the famous Chicago Loop. So the Chicago Loop refers to the central business district in Chicago and where does the Loop name come from? Well, it refers to the trains that come from the uh, outer neighborhoods into the main city center. They loop around and go back. Now, almost all the trains do this with the exception of the red, blue, and green lines. They go through, okay? Um, but it's a fascinating place. It it's the central business district of Chicago, so it's where a lot of offices are. It's where a lot of people work, right? But there are a lot of people living here, and there are tons of things to do. And if you're an architecture buff, you're gonna absolutely love the Loop because it really is a living architecture museum. I mean, there are some of the most beautiful buildings in the world right here in this neighborhood. And some of the most famous architecture firms in the world have their pieces right here on display in Chicago. So you can go into the buildings, you can look at them from afar. It really is an architectural masterpiece of a place. So let's begin. The Chicago Theater, built in 1921, is an iconic Chicago theater still used today for dozens of off-Broadway productions. Check out the classic elegance of the theater and make sure to catch a show when you're here in town. The Chicago Loop is often referred to as downtown Chicago. The district, however, is a specific neighborhood within Chicago's larger downtown area. It serves as a center for employment and has grown around the loop that Chicago's elevated train system makes around the district. The area is characterized by large and towering skyscraper office buildings with attractive parks and plazas below. As you walk through the loop streets, you will feel enclosed by the massive skyscrapers as if walking through a canyon. must-do that you have to do when you're in the Chicago Loop or downtown Chicago is a river cruise, right? So it's an architectural river cruise. It's a little pricey. It's about $50. There's different vendors to do it, but they're all around the same price range. But it's a 75-minute tour, and you really get to see from the river some of the most beautiful architecture you'll ever see in your life. And it's interesting because the river goes through the city and through the buildings like a canyon. So you kind of snake your way through everything and you learn a lot about it too because the tours are guided. So they tell you all about the buildings, all about their history, all about the architects. So this is a must do when you're here in the loop. When you're in Chicago, you must take an architecture cruise down the Chicago River. Here you will learn all about the river, the city's history, and all about the buildings and their story. Architecture and history buffs will love the wealth of information provided on the tour as you glide along the river under all of the historic bridges. The boats are also equipped with a full bar to have a drink, people watch, and take in the sun along this relaxing and picturesque cruise. The cruise begins on the main branch of the Chicago River, which is the water border between the north and south sections of downtown Chicago, the loop occupying the southern section. It then continues along the north and south branches, providing you impeccable views of the district's impressive architecture meandering through a canyon of buildings. 
The tour really helps you to learn Chicago's story and understand how the city's transportation, business, and political influence has made the city one of the most important cities in the USA and the world. Now the next place you have to see when you're here in the Chicago Loop is Millennium Park, which is where I am now. So Millennium Park is actually a pretty new park. It was only built in 2004, but it's an amazingly modern park. And what it's most known for is the Bean, which is actually not called the Bean, it's called Cloud Gate, which is a famous sculpture that people go underneath to take a picture of yourself and you can see the entire uh, Chicago skyline right behind you, right? But there's more than that to here. There is a um, outdoor pavilion and concert hall. There's this really cool modern bridge. There's nature trails and playgrounds. So definitely check that out when you're here. Millennium Park is a 24.5 acre park located in the Chicago Loop and built in 2004 to commemorate the new millennium. The park occupies the space of a former rail yard and has become a real favorite of tourists and Chicagoans alike. The park has a very modern feel. You're not going to find horse and carriages, super aged trees, or old playgrounds like you would in many other parks and city centers. However, you can marvel at the impressive Cloud Gate, also known as the Bean, which has become an international symbol of the city, walk through the gardens, or catch a show in the attractive outdoor concert venue. Check out the impressive pedestrian bridge connecting the eastern and western parts of the park. The bridge itself is an architectural masterpiece designed by famed architect Frank Gehry and really has a flowing feeling as you walk across. The next place that we're gonna check out in Millennium Park is the Crown Fountain. Now the Crown Fountain basically is two fountains, it's like two towers, right? And on the fountains, it is pictures of just normal Chicagoans' faces. And what happens is every so often, they open their mouth like this, and then water spits out, right? So um, we're here in May, you may not see it as much, but if you come in the summertime, you'll see tons of kids playing in the water. And it's just a good, good place to hang out, people watch, and just enjoy the city around you. Okay, the next thing you have to check out when you're here in the Loop is the Art Institute of Chicago. So the Art Institute of Chicago is one of the world-class museums on Earth. So there are some of the most famous pieces of art right in this building. Um, it's a little pricey again, it's $20 to $30, but it's well worth it, especially if you're interested in art. Now there's art from tons of different time periods, and you can really spend the whole day here if you're interested in art. And as you can see, it's a very lively area. There's a live band outside. So definitely check this out. It's just about a block or two walk from Millennium Park. The Art Institute of Chicago was founded in 1879 and is one of the oldest and largest art museums in the world. This is a truly world-class art museum comparable to the Met in New York and the Louvre in Paris. The museum exhibits work from some of the most famous artists of all time, and here you can view the originals of some of the most iconic works of art in human history. Renoir, Seurat, Matisse, Picasso, Monet, and many more can be found in this must-see museum. You can spend the whole day browsing the collection and truly become inspired by these big-name artistic geniuses.
museum also houses an impressive classical collection from the Greek, Roman, and Byzantine eras. Here you can walk along sculptures, pottery, and statues of pieces that were created over 2,000 years ago or more. It is truly fascinating to walk through the Art Institute as you're really walking through time and exploring the creativity of the human mind throughout the centuries. See what was important to people in their daily lives through certain times in our human history and marvel at the changes in trends and tastes. The museum also houses an impressive European medieval collection. Here you can really understand the importance of religion to the people and how it affected their everyday lives. The dramatic paintings are truly moving and you can also see some examples of medieval and renaissance era suits of armor. State Street is the zero east and west divider separating the city from east and west sides. This historic street is famous for shopping, business, lively entertainment, and employment. Make sure to stroll down State Street, that great street, as Frank Sinatra put it. So while you're in the loop and while you're here on State Street, you want to check out Marshall Field. So it is now a Macy's. Uh, Macy's bought it in about the mid 2000s, but any true blood Chicagoan will still call it Marshall Fields. Now, it's just a department store, right? So it's got all your store stuff, anything you might need. Um, but what's so great about it is the architecture within the department store. So it has amazing architecture. It has this thing on the top floor called the Walnut Room, which has, you know, fine dining and a really elegant setting. Um, also, if you're here around Christmas time, it does amazing window displays and a giant tree in that walnut room. So let's head in. Marshall Fields was founded in 1852 as an upscale department store in this building. The former Marshall Fields was bought out by Macy's in 2006 and now serves as one of Macy's flagship stores. The impressive Great Hall makes for a truly unique shopping experience and many call the department store magical around Christmas time. If you're in Chicago in December, have lunch or dinner under the tree in the impressive and grand top floor walnut room. The next thing you have to see when you're here in the loop is Daly Center, which is where we are now. So Mayor Daly and his son were one of the big time mayors here in Chicago um, in the 20th century. Um, this famous uh, Picasso behind me is one of the best pieces of public art in the nation. And what's so great about it? So it's a government center. So this is where city buildings are, state buildings, county buildings. Um, but what it is, it's a gathering place. So this is a place where people come to protest. This is a place where there's uh, markets. This is a place like in Christmas time, this is this thing called Chris Kindle Market where it's like this German village and you can kind of go through and buy little things. Um, but it's a gathering place and it's surrounded by beautiful old and new buildings. So check that out when you're here. Check out the impressive Cook County building. This grandiose governmental building still functions as an important administrative center for the entire county. The old world and unique charm of the building is truly inspirational.
The next place you have to check out in the loop is LaSalle Street, which is what I'm on now. And behind me is the famous Chicago Board of Trade building. Now, this is the financial hub of Chicago. So you see a lot of big financial companies here and they're, they're housed in these grand, big, old, neoclassical buildings. Um, if you saw like The Dark Knight and a lot of Batman movies, uh, they film here a lot because it has a very grand vibe. And it kind of feels similar to Wall Street in New York. Um, if you're interested in that, we have a Wall Street in New York video too. Check that out. Um, so it has a real financial vibe. It has a real city of broad shoulders uh, vibe around here. So definitely check this out. Uh, we're here on a Saturday, so it's not as bumping. But if you come here during the week, you're going to see tons of traders and financial professionals. It's definitely something to see. It's like the Wall Street of Chicago and of the Midwest. LaSalle Street is the financial center of Chicago and is anchored by the historic Chicago Board of Trade Building. Chicago is known for its commodities trade and the street is referred to as the Canyon, describing the canyon-like effect the large buildings crowding the narrow streets provide. This famous street is the hub of Chicago business, particularly finance, and is characterized by grandiose, elegant, and foreboding architectural skyscrapers. Come during the week to catch a glimpse of the Chicago finance professional scene, also known as the Wall Street of Chicago. When you're in the loop, I recommend you check out the impressive street art dotting the plazas between the skyscraper buildings. The city, though very built up and dense, provides a good amount of public space throughout the district. The loop is incredibly walkable and the best way to really see and feel the heartbeat of the city is to walk along all of the different urban canyon corridors. The next place you have to check out when you're in the loop is Grant Park and the famous Buckingham Fountain, which is right behind us. This fountain is almost 100 years old. It was built in 1927 and is one of the largest fountains in the world. Now, a lot of people just come to the fountain, but I really encourage you to check out everything that Grant Park has to offer. I mean, it's a real urban oasis in the middle of the city. And if you're here in July, um, it's also the home of the Taste of Chicago, where you can go and just try foods from all the different neighborhoods and all the different restaurants. Um, also, Grant Park is a fantastic place to come on a late spring, summer, or early fall evening because it's lit up and it actually shoots up high into the sky. Um, it's an amazing place to take a date or your family or friends. So definitely check out both of these sites when you're here in the Chicago Loop. Grant Park is known as Chicago's backyard and is a sprawling central urban park with skyscrapers on one side and the beautiful Lake Michigan on the other. It is less touristy than Millennium Park and has more traditional urban park amenities. The park has a variety of gardens, statues, plazas, and tree-lined paths that you can walk through to take a break from the concrete jungle. The impressive Buckingham Fountain is a must-see and is a dramatically beautiful spot to marvel at the city or the lake behind you while relaxing with family, friends, or a romantic partner. The next thing you have to do when you're in the loop is see the Sears Tower. 
Well, now it's called the Willis Tower, but any true Chicagoan will still call it the Sears Tower. The name was changed in the mid-2000s. So the Sears Tower was built in the 1970s and it remained the tallest building in the world from when it was built until 1998. In 1998, it was surpassed by the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur. Um, but what's so great about the Sears Tower observation deck, which is where we're going to go now, is there you can see a vista of the entire city in every direction. And on a good day, you can see four states, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Indiana. So, um, and you have beautiful views of the lake, beautiful views of the entire skyline below you. And what's really cool is there's this thing called the ledge where you can go out and you actually are standing right above the street right so it actually goes out it's extended from the building a big window glass and you stand on it and you can look straight down so it's pretty cool to see and i definitely recommend you check that out when you're here Sears Tower Sky Deck affords you amazing views of the entire city below. From the Sky Deck you can see in all directions and you can really visualize the impressive grid urban design of Chicago. The best part is the ledge where you are suspended over 1,000 feet above the street below. Okay guys, the next thing you have to do when you're here in the loop is check out the Chicago Riverwalk. So that's where I am now. So where we were on the Chicago River architecture tour before, this was along it. So if you saw on there, there's a bunch of restaurants, bars, there's just a really nice promenade to walk on. Um, it's especially nice um, on weekend evenings in the warmer months. So definitely check it out. It's great people watching. It's just a great public urban space. And the greatest part is you get to walk between all the buildings. So it's a canyon of buildings around you along the water there's beautiful boats as you can see going by and it's just a great experience so definitely check that out when you're here the Chicago Riverwalk is a recent addition to the loop and is a welcomed addition like many American cities the river used to be a place of filth and pollution and somewhere you avoided being near the Chicago River was somewhere you didn't want to be and was filled with pollution and was seedy and secluded. In recent years, however, the Chicago River has gone through a renaissance and has become a truly beautiful destination. Here people hang out, people watch, play music, dine, drink, dance, and more. It is an amazing urban space and a must-see when you're in the area. The Riverwalk maintains a truly lively and happy atmosphere, especially on weekend evenings. That was the Riverwalk, and this concludes our big tour of the Chicago Loop. I had an amazing time showing it, and I hope you guys had a good time too. Um, what I love so much about the Chicago Loop is just the big city feel it has, and the huge buildings, and the grandiosity of it all. And you really feel like you're in like the center of the world, and you have this living architecture museum all around you, and the people are friendly, and it's always a bumping place to go, especially on um, a weekend night. Um, guys, if you like this content, make sure you like this video, share this video, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, let me know your tips and tricks below. Tell me some things that I missed that uh, we can show next time. Okay, guys, until next time, take care. Bye.